how shocking for you guys to actually see me in my full-on pajamas. This is what I've actually been filming the past couple of my videos in. So if you wanted to see the full outfit, ta-da, here it is. As you might have been able to guess by the title of this uh, video, I am here to talk to you about what you can see on the screen at the moment, which is a program called Cucumber, which is then going to be followed by Banana, and another one called, uh, is it Tofu or something like that? It is part of what Channel 4 is doing at the moment to kind of bring gay media forward a little bit, in my personal opinion. And there is something that I wanted to talk to you guys about which hasn't really sort of been brought forward when this has been getting advertised. See, the writer of all three of these episodes is called Russell T. Davis. And in the 1990s, Russell T. Davis wrote something which has gone around the world and is still actually quite famous to this day. Who's ever heard of the expression queer as folk? Queer as folk was a program set in the mid 90s in Manchester, which I actually presume that this is, I think I, I think I recognised part of Manchester before, but I'm not too sure if I actually did. But it was centrised around the Gabe Village in Manchester, and it was actually really, really interesting. It ran for two series, and people seemed to love it. Now, don't get me wrong, when Queer as Folk first started, in the first episode, it featured things like Rimin, it featured, uh, I think there was something happening in a phone box. Like, there was loads of sex going on but i think that was just to bring the shock value to it to get you hooked straight away and unfortunately i've been watching this and it doesn't really have that value but there is something more important to note about all of this is the fact that it is bringing your gay media forward to people and in my personal opinion i think this will be bringing it to the people who need to watch this sort of thing to try and learn about the gay community now not everything in this program is something that I can relate to as a gay man. I haven't had the same experiences that have been in that show. For example, I haven't wanked over the programme Hollyoaks, at least I don't think I have, although well, I might have had one while that's been on. But there's been other things in the programme that I've noticed that they do that, again, I don't personally do. But I'm quite sure that there are some people out there who can relate to them situations. And there are certain things in there that I can find relatable, like the group of gay men sat in a taxi rank at the end of the night they're waiting for their taxi to go home and they're talking about gay stuff. Yes, I have actually seen that thing happen in real life. One thing that's really interesting about this for me is the fact that earlier on uh, this month, to start off my new year, I got to meet my, well, I can only refer to as my gay idols, which is uh, Jay, Brian, Daniel and Selena. They also come under uh, Gay Family Values, uh, Depth Fox channel on YouTube. Uh, they are the Lafue family. Like, they have so many different names, it's confusing as to what they're known as to most people. I'll put a little link to their YouTube channel in that little bit down there below. Go, please go and check them out because their channel is amazing and I absolutely love them to bits. The reason that I say that it's interesting in meeting them this year is the fact that I got to pick at Brian's brain, which is something that I've wanted to do for so long. Because Brian is this really intellectual man who has his head screwed on, he knows what he's talking about, and that's just what I love. I love to go and pick at his brain. And I actually got to do that. And one of the topics that I uh, spoke about with him was to do with education of the gay community, like looking at its history sort of thing. You know, I mean, we go into schools these days, kind of all religions are taught about. We learn about loads of different types of history, but we don't learn about the gay community. Now, the gay community itself at the moment is trying to push forward for total equality. So, yeah, OK, over the past couple of years or so, it's been to do with same sex marriage and that sort of thing. We are still treated as second class citizens in so many other ways people aren't actually fully aware of how second class we're actually treated for example please go and look up to see if a gay man can give blood where you live i'm quite sure the answer will be no now when i asked brian about this kind of topic he was sort of he sort of i think he sort of agreed with me but then sort of said that you know because there has been this whole thing at the moment or recently certainly, uh, to do with gay marriage and that sort of thing. The main opposition have been saying that, you know, oh, quite soon they will be teaching about gays in school and they will be recruiting gays. And I can't, I can't exactly see where he's coming from. I, I cannot criticise his point of view because it is something that in my point of view, I had actually completely ignored what them sort of people had been saying. But I do still kind of think that my idea is a bit of a good one. I mean, the whole gay community does have a really rich history. Harvey Milk, for example, I think we're on like, what, two or three films on his life now and everything that he did in his life. And it is really, really interesting to see the steps that the gay community made forward and how he was involved in doing that. But he isn't alone. We have loads of people that have helped the gay community to step forward. And we still have those people going around today. Uh, Peter Thatchell, for example, in the United Kingdom. You know, he's doing his bit for the gay community in actually bringing forward same-sex marriage into the United Kingdom. 
because he was quite involved in that. But you see, the unfortunate thing is, is that Brian was right. You know, we can't teach about the gays in schools at the moment because we still have the opposition against us that say, you're going to teach about the gay community and you're going to recruit them. Now, okay, some of us out there will be watching it as gay people and going, but we don't recruit in schools. And other people will be watching this who are straight and they'll be going, yeah, the gay community doesn't recruit in schools. Like, that's not how it works. But there are still them people out there who believe that that genuinely does happen. And unfortunately, they seem to be the ones holding us back from actually saying, you know what, if you want to learn about us, here's our history. We can't do that in schools. It does seem for now, though, that this is kind of going to be the closest thing to education that you're going to be able to get to. And yeah, OK, it's on quite late at night and there are a few parts to it. And OK, yeah, maybe not all people are going to get the storylines and find it incredibly relatable to, but it is bringing gays forward. I know these days that we have so many different soap operas where people are gay characters portraying certain gay storylines, but you don't really get to see everything that happens and it's not exactly from a gay perspective. This sort of thing is. Now, if you've been subscribed to this channel for a long time, thank you, uh, but you may remember a video that I did ages ago, which is called Bring Back Queer as Folk. And unfortunately for me, I think this is the closest that I'm actually going to get to them bringing it back. I'm not going to say it's completely disappointing because I'd be lying if I did, but it's not Stuart and Vince, is it? Look, I'm not going to go on a massive rant and say that the gay community should be taught about in schools and that's it, because in my personal opinion, the education system has quite a lot to change. For example, when I left school, I didn't know who to vote for. I didn't know what voting actually meant. I didn't know what political parties did. I didn't know how to balance a budget. I didn't know anything like that. And yet, these are things that you learn going through life. So maybe the gay community is just one of them. Maybe that's how we're going to progress forward. But in a weird twist of events, I would like to thank Channel 4 because this isn't the first time that they've gone out on a limb and tried to document the gay community in the best light that they possibly can. But this is what they're doing. And it's about time that we started showing more of the gay community.